Hey ho there folks, today is Sunday, June 18th, Father's Day. I've been meaning to do this for a long time. It was on my bucket list to share with you folks my partial collection of antique Bibles printed in the U.S. Most of you already know that if you don't already, Johann Barr or John Baer was born in 1897 in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. And by the ripe old age of approximately 22 years old, he embarked on printing a German folio Bible in a Lancaster print shop, which is called the New Era Printer. It even exists there today, probably under a new name, but the building is still there, I understand. I'm going to try to shoot this video contiguously uh, with minimal editing, and I'm by myself. So what I had to do was make my studio lighting accommodate the Bible. So here you see a sort of a rigged up setup. I took my Hammond Oregon bench and mounted underneath it some LED lighting and I mounted some fluorescence up there and in front of us are the two Johann Barr circa 1819 Bibles that I own and we're going to get into the details of those uh, I think it's really kind of cool uh, some of the nuances of these these Bible underneath that is a slab of four foot long, inch and seven eighths thick walnut. It's actually a tree. It's my next rainy day project. Today it's kind of muggy out, humid, rainy. So I can't go outside to mow the cemetery. So I thought I'd do this and let you see what it is. Uh, one of the reasons I chose this uh, piano organ bench is because the lid lifts up and when I go to set the iPhone 7 down that I'm using here to take this, I'm going to actually pinch it between here and then it's face down and I really won't lose too much of the video. Uh, so here's the first Bible I acquired on my left. It was an eBay score. Just to give you an idea of size, it's, it's humongous. They weigh about 12 pounds. Here's the next one. They've got oak boards. Um, I do have a tape measure here. We'll see what it is. Um, you're looking at geez, 10 inches wide and looks like 15 inches long and about four and a half inches thick and I try to not handle these too often because the uh, they're, they're robust and fragile you can see here in this one the, um, the spine has sort of separated uh, these are I guess calf skin leather and the boards are sort of tapered on an angle see it. Um, this one's still kind of... Um, from all everything I can ascertain, the paper is uh, what they call wove paper. Here's part of the old clasp with, this, with the nails. Hopefully this is coming through. Um, you get to see some of the rusticness. There's actually part of the, the oak here. A lot of foxing. Here's even some of the uh, probably the hemp linen for the binding. These are what you see on the outside. These large um, pumps and the spines. There you can see it. Each has six, I believe. These. These two examples were probably produced um, 
close to one another. I haven't cracked the code yet on how that works. But um, anyhow, in, uh, these were released in 1819. And one thing unique, I think, to this Bible in the United States is it's printed in German. And the press was a hand press. So John Bear had to set the type. Uh, he inked the type by hand with what they call a ball. And then he put the paper under the press. And then he had to rotate the press through about 90 degrees with a large worm screw. And that put a tremendous amount of force on the paper and, and the ink. And the other thing about this, if you don't already know it, um, he sold subscriptions ahead of time to the tune of almost 1,500 uh, copies. He secured a, a, essentially a promissory note from each family or party that wanted a Bible. And as a result, he compiled a list of names and he actually published the names. You're going to see that in a little bit. Uh, this cover's a little bit shiny, so you get some reflection. This one's dull, so you don't reflect. Um, I'm going to show you the subscription pages. And uh, if you want to email me later, I have sort of a Word document with some of those names in it. I can do some searching for you, uh, for the genealogists out there. Uh, it's a huge score because it reads like the who's who of Pennsylvania, Maryland, Ohio, and uh, names the counties where the person lived at the time. And uh, again, everything's in German. So um, the two examples I have, uh, as far as I know, there's only one illustration in the whole Bible, and that is of Moses in the Ten Commandments. And this, this example... Um, is not as pretty as the one in the, in the next Bible, but this Bible is complete. It has the uh, title page, and uh, it's important to see that uh, it's pretty well intact. Nice here, Lancaster, Pennsylvania, gedruckt und in Verlag by Johann Barr. 1819. So it was printed in Lancaster by John Bear, Johann Barr, in 1819. And that's the word Moses. And that's an engraving by that guy or gal. And you see I might have a little bit of a line in there, but maybe uh, you can pick up some detail. It's sort of like a V-Lox, what we call V-Lox type image. I'm sure it was a, a woodcut subject of verification. Maybe someone can clarify some of the stuff I'm telling you. But uh, in any event, um, the thing is humongous. Um, it's, it's the, the uh, Old and New Testaments translated from the Martin Luther Oh, I don't read German super well, but um, it also includes the Apocrypha, which we're going to see a little bit a little bit later in the video. I'm going to try to keep this as short as I can so I don't bore the crap out of you guys. But um, I haven't translated this page yet, but someday I'll get to that. Uh, you can see how nice the... Uh, dark the ink is in this particular copy. Looks like it's focusing nice there. Trying not to shake too much. And here is the subscription page. Subscription. And these are the folks from Pennsylvania. Of course he put Lancaster County first. And then you just go down the names. You can recognize a lot of names. Yeah, there's an old dandelion from uh, the 1800s, I'm sure, pressed in between the pages. And uh, there's about four or five pages of these subscriptions. They go through, and you're now to Center County. Somebody counted them, I think it's 1,472 names, just shy of 1,500. Just imagine what it took to set the type, 
Pencils Ohio. Set the type for every single page. Have it proofed. And then acquire the paper. Here's Maryland. I'm not sure what that is. Um, and actually pull it off. And here's some more of the the type and the fonts. Now, one thing I do know is the the size of the font changes throughout the, throughout the Bible. And for whatever reason, I'm sure he was shy on, on metal type. Um, I'm going to get an example of that here in a second. You can see how kind of some marks. Um, but it's going to get small uh, here pretty soon. See now this is getting more of a darker, darker um, edge. Some of the ink bled. I'm not sure how long you let each page dry, but you're seeing some bleeding. And we didn't even get into the meat of the Bible yet, so here it is. There's the index. There's the Old Testaments, books of the Old Testaments. And, uh, prophets, Isaiah, Jeremiah. You'll recognize these names. And, uh, oh, look at that, another flower. Looks like uh, Johnny Jump Up, we'll call it. I'm sure some botanists are going to want to see that. And then there's some of the extra books. I'm not a super Bible um, expert. I know enough to be dangerous. Here's the Das Erst Buch Moses, the first book of Moses. So here we go, chapter one. And so on. So it kind of goes like that through all the chapters, and one thing about this particular volume is, I don't know if you can see the color of the edges and how the paper lays, it's kind of nice, but then when you get over into this other volume, it looks like it was almost marbled at one time. The, the edges have a distinctly darker color. And there's an old broken one of the collapse is broken. Now, this is a little bit of a different set of collapse. So, okay. And you'll see I have some bookmarks in there already. Because I want to get right to the pages. So here we are. I'm gonna clamp the phone now down and see if I can. Turn to the uh, two thirds through the book where you're going to find they had some blank pages inserted, and that, the intent there was to record the family history. It's just before the the, the New Testament. Um, I'm going to show you in the other book an example on page, I guess, 27, the Apocrypha. Um, it's a little bit better in that one. And uh, we'll go from there. But um, I'm going to pick up the phone again now. Here's where they, this particular Bible was Jacob Coons. And look what we got down here at the bottom of this page here. Jacob Coons and Anna, his wife, were married the fourth day of October, AD 1819. So this could have been a wedding gift. Interesting to note, certainly he must have been of German descent, but it's written in English. Um, so that's a, the first thing I noticed. Most of these Bibles um, I've seen written with the, the old German script. Here, the uh, what we'll call the Scrivener took some liberties with his uh, old ink pen and tried to get a little fancy. And it's kind of nice to uh, get some light up in there from the LEDs. But uh, I've got all this transcribed, the history, it's out there on Ancestry, Roots Web, everything matches where they lived. Uh, these are the children of that marriage. 
And uh, okay, that's one page. You see that? Then we have a, a blank, and then you're just seeing some bleed through here. And then we have another set of pages, which records some more events, some deaths. Okay, some married names. And it just goes down the list. And another bonus I found in the uh, one of the pages was an example of the German script. So this confirms my idea. I'll get to that in a second. Certainly that they were a German family. I'm not quite sure where they lived. Uh, somewhere in the Pennsylvania, no question. So you see some county names. Dolphin, Lancaster, Dolphin County. That's county. Rock Hill, probably towns of Albany. Rock Hill, place of birth date. This is sort of English, some names, the D.O. name. But here, this piece of paper, you can almost get a feel for it. it was, it's a piece of woven paper. Completely different color. You get an idea of the, of the color. And um, it's got a date. 1859, it looks like, May 12th, and uh, there's some values there. It looks like a uh, an assessment of stuff, but uh, one day I'll get to translating that as well. I see chalk. Maybe you see something, but anyhow, that's... Uh, a little bonus for the Bible, and then once we turn the page, we're oh, yeah, here's the probably the second illustration that we've cut. I forgot about this one right between the, the beginning of the New Testament. You'll see some angelic uh, with a little bit of a starburst, and then of course, that's probably your baby Jesus. Here, this person again, Henry J. Henry. There you have that. There it says, New Testament, Jesus Christ. And again, he puts his name and date, 1819. And that goes on, oh, look at this. I haven't seen this. Here's a piece of fabric in there. It's probably a bookmark. Sure, I have to go through this page by page and see what's going on. I'm trying to get to the Apocrypha and an example of um, the changing type. Here, here, here we go. We're back. Oh, another plant. We're back near the back. You can see it's like an index of names. Um, yeah, it's the register. Oh, look at this. Oh, I hadn't seen that. Another, Elizabeth Coombs. This testimony that she was head this day at school in something class number 9 December 2nd. I guess that's 1836. Josiah Brown. I can't tell. Well, I'm gonna have to keep that out. Yep, it just goes to show you, folks. See, this is called the register on page 77. That uh, I almost have to go through this book. It's probably filled with some treasures that I'm not aware of. It gives you an idea of the type and. They call it Fractor. The chances are the type was made in USA. I haven't confirmed that either. Um, but uh, we're already 20 minutes into the video now. I'm going to go over to the next Bible to show you that one. Um, it's got this, they're practically identical. You can see you know, the foxing changes, time of day, the paper. Yeah, here we got a 
example how small this font is. Borid, that means forward. So there's a little bit of a forward here. The Psalms, the first Psalm. So, um, yeah. Um, when we get to the next book of here, and to the right, we're going to see see what that holds for us. Um, this one, when I got it, uh, I think this paper is actually new. Um, it has the Moses, a really good example of Moses in this one, Un uncrimped, very dark, let me see. And it, there's the Ten Commandments. Moses receives the Ten Commandments. I'm sure that's what this is. Lord, again, forward. We have that, but it's missing the uh, title page, which you saw in another example. Again, here's subscription pages. They're intact. Very nice. And, um... Pretty much looks like the other one, but I'm going to just jump right ahead to the Apocrypha now. I have a bookmark with this really old piece of paper I found in here as well. It, it, it almost looks like, uh, yeah, rag. You can see all kind of stuff in it. Fibers. That's what they did back in the day sometimes. They would uh, sort of, say, grind up and put in a, make a brine solution of old, old clothing. And you had a hodgepodge or a mix match of stuff but what's interesting about this is how hard the type went in to the paper under the pressure of the screw press that he used and I need to you know maybe show you here you can get an idea up in this area this is all you know almost like braille relief it's the words from the other side that are really kind of protruding through here you get an idea of the you can see right here the a um, little bit of the uh, yeah how it's poking through. I mean, it's only you almost read it like braille. Uh, I'll show you the back side of this page here. You get a pretty good appreciation right here. These are the letters from this side of the page that come through. Really pressed hard. I mean, you can imagine the tons of pressure they put this under. The other thing is how awesome and dark the ink is. Now this paper had to be treated in what they call sized. Um, after you sort of make the paper, you have to size it so that the ink attaches and stays robust on the page. And uh, I'm sure that was a special process in itself. But uh, this, this page is just pressed so deep see it's coming back from the back side that uh, yeah he must have been angry that day I guess when he did that that page but there's other examples in the book as well of that and uh, yeah just just imagine making paper and then and then making ink in 1819 and then printing printing this um, here we have uh, the pages. This happens to be the Bible for Abraham Stocker, son of George and Catherine. Uh, George and Catherine, blah 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 blah. But this this uh, Abraham was born in 1796 in uh, Plainfield Township, Northampton County. I have all the details on this. Um, it's a 1790. Yeah, Forks Township. Schweit, Elizabeth Schweitzer was born. But um, that's the only page in here. And again, this is a little bit surprising, but it was written in English for another German family. And uh, we're going to get to the bottom of this because here we have it was entered by George Pewters, P E W T E R S, 1839. And uh, I'm going to crack the code on that. I have a few beads on that. This this paper almost looks laid, but I'm pretty certain that the rest of it is wool. And uh, we'll have to do a little Wikipedia on what that means. Um, here again, we got the similar. In the middle again, the second engraving. A woodcut. And 
just like the other Bible. So there we have it. I'm going to try to cut this off now. Um, here's the register again in this one. Um, but uh, yeah, these are, um, I, I marvel at these um, because of the, how young the person was, John Bear, and just the logistics that it would have taken to um, produce you know, such a large thing with getting the ink and the, the press and then handling the paper getting the paper trimming the edges somewhere in here I guess I forgot to mark I did find a page that had gotten folded in before they um, say yeah maybe this is it here no. and then you can actually see how how much extra larger the, the paper stuck out let's say so I do have a good example of that Somewhere in here, I guess I didn't mark it, but uh, that was another great score for me to see um, how much the paper stuck out before they you know, cropped it off. These papers here were certainly folded uh, after after they've been cut, but I do have an example in here, and I might have just seen it where that is the case. Okay, if there's any questions, shoot me an email. Um, again, I'm enamored by these uh, and what it would have taken to produce these these Bibles and uh, I own two examples. All right, thanks folks.